Hello students, in this lecture, I am going to discuss on the designing and construction of a farm specially designed for the fish culture in an aquaculture project. Construction is very important step in an aquaculture project. Type of construction mainly depends upon the availability of raw materials like bricks, stones, cement, etc. Type of construction also depends upon the function of an individual form element and the culture system. For example, cement concrete ponds are constructed for nursery pond. Ordinary earthen embankments are constructed for extensive ponds. And the pre-stressed reinforced cement concrete ponds are constructed for intensive and super intensive cultural practices. The best time period to construct the pond is in between the late winter and the early summer season. Construction process requires careful supervision and skilled workmanship because the success of the entire project depends upon the efficient construction. Following are the sequence of operations to be carried out in the process of construction. First one is the land clearing. The site is to be cleared off from big boulders, stones and trees, bushes, etc. The land is to be made leveled if there is any steep slope or broken surface. There are three types of land clearing methods based on density of vegetation and mode of removal of materials from the site wherein fish farm is to be constructed. First one is manual clearing. If there are only small boulders and thin vegetations like small bushes or trees, then by engaging labors, the site can be cleared off. Clearing the site by engaging labors is called as manual clearing. Second method is mechanical clearing. If the density of vegetation is thick and complex in nature like uh, uh, big boulders, deep rooted trees, lots of undulations and big ditches, then Mechanical means like scrapers, bulldozers or other earth moving equipments are engaged to clear the site and this type of land clearing is called as mechanical clearing. Now the third method. It is the chemical clearing. If the soil at the site contains harmful bacteria or any other microorganisms which are harmful to aquatic animals, then some sort of chemicals are mixed into the soil to kill these harmful bacteria and this method of using chemicals to kill this bacteria is called as chemical method of clearing. Chemicals are used to eradicate unnecessary aquatic weeds too. After the land is cleared off, then the land is to be marked. For this, construction of various farm elements as per the layout planning. Dry white lime powder is used to show the positions of various farm elements like dikes, channels and ponds which are to be constructed and it is also called as staking. There are a number of factors playing major role in deciding the size of a pond in a fish farm like uh, quantity of available water, land area, technology. In terms of technology, whether it is a extensive, semi-intensive or intensive farming, production and income, access to market, manpower, equipment, etc. In intensive culture system, smaller ponds that is 1 to 5 hectare is preferred against the larger pond that is 3 to 10 hectares in extensive systems. Smaller ponds are convenient to operate whereas larger ponds are la take large time, such a long time to be filled and drained under a given set of condition. In spite of all these facts, following size ranges have generally been suggested. 0. Point, sorry, 1.05 to 2 hectare uh, is decided for nursery pond and for production of a stocking pond 0. 0.25 to 10 hectare and for spawning pond it is 0. 0.01 hectare. The earthwork involved in an excavation for the ponds can be estimated by any of the method given in the picture. Mechanical equipments like bulldozers, scrapers, crawlers, tractors are both using for the construction of larger farm. 
lining of the pond at the bottom is most essential activity because it reduces the seepage or increase water holding capacity lining can be done by concrete soil cement or polythene film or bricks or by cement tile you can see this lining in the picture here a dike is an embankment for controlling or holding back the water of a fish pond you can see this in the picture dike is the most important part of a pond thus it should be constructed with a great care a quantity of earth required per hectare for construction of the dikes for a 4 hectare pond is estimated to to be uh, 2000 to 4000 meter cube the soil to be used for dike construction should be free from any organic matter because the rot because uh, the rotting of organic matter will weaken the dike humus should also be thoroughly cleared off from the base of the dike to allow uh, the binding of dike to the base properly to avoid the seepage the dike should be built in layers of 25 to 35 cm in thickness while constructing a dike it is necessary to determine the steepest slope inclination of the dikes that will ensure stability on a long term basis as you can see in this pictures uh, dikes are slopy on inner or water side as well as outside with a flat top surface the slope depends upon the quality of the filling material and is technically defined as the distance in horizontal axis for each 30 cm height sometimes a nearly flat portion along the base of the slope is built and that is known as berm it is slightly above the water line and it is used to balance the weight of the dike and minimize the effect of wave action in our site proper water management is one of the most important factors governing the success of any aquaculture project whatever may be the source there has to be an inlet point and an outlet point to ensure regular and desired supply the best material for a pond drain is asbestos cement pipes but galvanized iron pipes may be preferred in small ponds the inlet may be anything from a simple pipe to a concrete outlet or we can say sluice and for outlet open sluice or monk is used monk is a sort of u shaped vertical tower having three walls two lateral wall and a back wall as you can see this in picture 2 after the ponds are dug out and the dikes and the and all the elements are built then first of all the pond bottom is compacted and then the bottom is covered with the specially designed network of drainage ditches a fish pond design is recommended for complete and easy drying of pond this design is characterized by a principal ditch dug in the center of the pond to bottom with this slope towards the monk there is an another series of obliquely arranged secondary ditches stopping and opening into the principal ditch the bottom of this ditches is approximately a uh, half meter wide the sides are sloping and the depth is varying from 30 to 40 cm the separating space between the secondary ditches depends on the compactness of the soil for example if the ground is compact the secondary ditches may be 10 m and if the soil is loose or impervious the separating space may be up to 50 meters so that's all about this lecture thank you so much